It's a battle for the fate of the Spider-Verse. Spider-Man, Aranya, and Night Spider are brawling with the minions of Shathra, the Wasp Queen, inside the temple of the first spider. Spidey insists that they'll come up with some kind of way out of this. He's Spider-Man. As long as he's around, they can't lose. And taking advantage of that, Wasp Zombie Spider-Gwen stabs Spider-Man right in the chest. It's like I never... everything I ever was. All those people I saved, will they be okay? I'm sorry. And with a puff of smoke, Spider-Man is gone. Years ago, a spider sitting on its web spins a line of thread, slowly descending to the ground. Unknowingly, it passes through some laboratory equipment and is engulfed by radiation. And Peter Parker takes a step back and raises his hand to his eyes, leaving the radioactive spider to fall to the ground rather than bite him. Peter asks the scientists running the experiment what sort of safety protocols they've got set up. The man in charge claims that the equipment is a safe distance away from all of them. Unnoticed by Parker and the scientists, the radiation dose spider has survived. It crawls between the feet of the crowd before finally biting the foot of a girl in sandals. The young woman, Cindy Moon, puts a hand to her head. She heads out to get some air while Peter keeps taking notes on the experiment. Later, he's sitting up in his bed, still working on his report as his aunt and uncle bring him milk and cookies. Before too long, he's giving his report on the experiment to his class. They don't look enthusiastic to listen to Pete talk. Peter freaking Parker, I swear to God. Even once he's done, Flash Thompson is loudly complaining in the corridor about having to listen to this. Liz Allen tells him to knock it off, accusing Flash of just being jealous. When Peter shows up himself, Flash confronts the kid, claiming he just makes all the rest of his class look bad. Parker snarks that it's not his fault Flash can't do anything smarter than football. Frustrated, Flash pushes Parker to the ground. Flash looks ready to pulverize Parker for showing him up, with the crowd cheering him on. Liz tries to stop him, but the school principal showing up is what actually stops the fight. Flash lies, claiming that he was just helping Peter out from the floor. Principal Davis asks Peter if that's true, and with the whole school watching, Peter uncomfortably confirms the lie. Davis seems unconvinced, but backs off for now. The other trends leave Peter in peace to pick up his books. Someday, I'll find a way to make you pay for all of this. You'll see. That night, Peter's back to working on his science at home with a brand new microscope. He thanks Uncle Ben and Aunt May for the gift, but they tell him not to think anything of it. They're watching TV that's currently showing an interview with J. Jonah Jameson. The reporter's curious as to why his newspaper is the only one that doesn't want to report on the city's mysterious new vigilante, Spider-Woman. Jameson disses her as just some kind of publicity stunt. May and Ben are both with Jonah on this, not happy at how many super people are showing up lately. As they're watching though, a strange man kicks the door open, shocking all three Parkers. The robber has a gun and isn't messing around. He orders them to put their hands up. May's so shocked she can't even believe what's happening. Uncle Ben's more put together, telling the thug to keep the gun pointed at him. He makes it clear that the guy can take whatever he wants. It's not worth the family getting hurt. Peter tries to help, offering the thief his new microscope. The robber gets jumpy, yelling at Peter to go stand with the others. May yells at him not to point his gun at her nephew. The robber turns it toward her instead. And that's the last straw. Peter jumps towards the robber, screaming out for him to stop. On reflex, the thug turns and shoots Peter down. The Parkers are shocked at their nephew's sudden fate. Furious, Ben punches the thug out before he can get a second shot off. May's attention is on Peter, holding him close. He's still alive, but weak, mumbling an apology for not being fast enough. May yells at Ben to call an ambulance for their boy. In no time, the cops and paramedics are all here. Peter's being loaded up on a stretcher, while the thief is being put in the back of a patrol car. A little later, the Parkers are hearing the results of Peter's initial diagnosis. The doctor's optimistic, convinced that Peter will pull through. However, the x-ray of his right leg, the point where he was actually shot, is showing bad signs. The doctor's worried Peter may never walk again. 
May and Ben aren't happy to hear that, but they have faith in Pete to recover. Soon enough, he's out of his wheelchair, training on his use of crutches with an attendant nurse. After that, he's down to one crutch and back at school. Peter's not happy about this, expecting more bullying, but hopes he can keep his head down and avoid attention. That doesn't work. One of the other kids kicks him in his wounded leg, knocking Peter to the ground. The crowd looks down at Peter, sneering at him. The kid who kicked him, Jason Ionello, calls this a new low even for bookworm Peter Parker. Peter actually agrees with this, roasting Jason as pathetic even by bully standards. Jason's about to lay into him more, but before he can, that's enough! A new arrival slams Jason into the lockers, yelling that from now on, no one's picking on Peter Parker. Jason's too much of a coward to argue back. Now he's put Jason in his place, Peter's new best friend helps him up to his feet. Peter's surprised as everyone else to see who it is. Flash Thompson's changed his mind about wimpy Peter Parker now that he's heard about what happened with the burglar. Taking a bullet for his family took guts, more than anything normal high school life can throw at them. Throwing a shoulder around Pete, he turns to the crowd. What are you all looking at? Don't you know what we got here? This kid's the biggest damn hero in all of Midtown High. Come on, let's hear it for Parker! The whole school cheers his name at the top of their lungs. For the first time, Peter Parker feels like something other than an outcast. That lunchtime, he's sitting with Flash's friends, now a real part of the group. Peter feels awkward but runs with it, suggesting they go check out a planetarium exhibit. Flash laughs. He won't do something that boring, but Pete pushing his luck is funny. Liz points out there's a pep rally tonight and asks Peter to head there on a date. That night, all four head out together in Flash's car. Before long, Peter's sitting at the back of the class with Flash. The two are real friends by this point, though they still have some differences. Flash is looking to copy Peter's work. Parker shuts that idea down, but when Flash admits his coach is threatening to drop him from the team unless his grades improve, well, Peter won't leave him hanging. He'll tutor his new friend instead, help him find the answers for himself. Before today's class can begin, the principal's about to speak. But he's interrupted by someone knocking the classroom door off its hinges. The Sandman smashes his way into the room. One of the students screams. The super crook yells at the kid to shut up. Peter Parker, meanwhile, is flashing back to the day the burglar invaded his home, the day he got shot. Sandman roars, cursing her for not leaving him alone. Silk quips that she's just trying to earn a Girl Scout badge in crime fighting. Peter's awed at getting to watch a superheroine in action, but Flash and Davis soon usher him out of the room, even as Silk keeps punching away. Outside, the students are amazed at how cool the Spider Woman was. Flash jokes that Liz ought to watch out. Peter may have a crush on their new friend. Pete shoots that down, but doesn't deny how impressive she was. She's our age, but she's not a kid sidekick. She's a hero in her own right, like Thor or Iron Man. Wrong! What she is is a menace, a foreign menace, and I'm going to prove it! J. Jonah Jameson's here in the flesh this time, and he's ranting loudly at the cops. He's convinced Silk, being visibly Asian, is some kind of web-slinging spy. He's even blaming her for sabotaging his son's space flight. Peter tries to argue with Jameson, pointing out that Silk saved the students from Sandman. The media mogul isn't buying it, assuming the two are working together. But as soon as he says it, someone points up at the rooftop. The Spider Woman's already done with her fights and has Sandman safely secured inside a vacuum cleaner. Peter calls out his thanks to her and she accepts it, though corrects him. Her name's Silk, and she adds for Jameson's benefits that she was born in Queens. She's no foreign spy. Even days later, Peter's still thinking about Silk pointing out that there are lots of Korean Americans in Queens. Silk could live down the block from them. Flash wants to try and focus on their chemistry final, ribbing Pete for focusing on his scrapbook over their schoolwork. 
Rocky flips it open, showing off a big front page photo of Silk fighting the lizard in downtown, supposedly taken by Cindy Moon. Flash teases Peter about starting up a Silk fan club. Peter isn't actually opposed to that idea, given how much the Bugle dislikes her. But Flash actually encourages him to aim higher. He's always impressed by Peter's intelligence. If he thinks about it, he can probably come up with a much better plan to help Silk. And it doesn't take Peter long to think of something. Soon enough, he's back to staying in at night, working hard in his room. May and Ben check up on him, but Peter seems in good spirits. His aunt and uncle smile, happy at how well he's doing. Peter's just putting the finishing touches to his full array of devices. He's got web shooters, spider tracers, and a silk signal all ready to go. Now that he's ready to go, he holds up a spider-looking radio transmitter, using it to summon Silk to a meeting on the roof of Midtown High tonight. And in her room, Cindy Moon hears this message, transmitted right into her mind through spider sense. At 10 o'clock that night, Peter is waiting for Silk on the roof, just like he promised. The vigilante orders him to turn around slowly, but is surprised to see he's just a kid. The last people who sent her messages via spider sense transmission were a Russian spy and Doctor Doom. She didn't expect some harmless teen nobody to radio her like that. Peter picks up the backpack he brought, explaining that since Silk saved his class, he wanted to pay her back. He knows tech, and figured he could build stuff for her. He's got backup web shooters in case Silk's organic ones run out. He's even got a magnetic inverter that could shoot out Vulture's wings, something Silk admits she could have really used in her fight with him. Still, the hero has a question for Peter. Why do this? She helps people all the time, they don't usually try to help her back. Peter counters he was going to ask Silk why she does this. Her powers could earn her a fortune, why do superhero stuff? Silk admits that she was told to hide in a bunker and that if she used her powers openly it could endanger everyone she loved. But life kept going crazy and she felt a pull to intervene over and over again. It's like her spider sense. She knew that if she didn't deal with these issues, no one else would. People would get hurt. Her story told, Silk turns the question back to Peter, wanting to know why he wants to help her. Peter admits it comes down to Jameson. The publisher's a bully, and Peter's been on the other side of that most of his life. But when he was at his lowest, Flash helped reach him up. Now his life is good, Peter wants to do the same thing for this new hero. Looks like I just got myself an IT guy. Welcome to Team Silk. The two have a long career together. Next time Silk fights Vulture, she uses the inverter to great effect. Silk makes Peter's gadgets a big part of her arsenal, cutting through Mysterio's illusions with the Silk signal and using spider tracers to keep track of Kraven the Hunter. Silk keeps selling photos to Jameson that help pay for Pete to build her more stuff. The publicity has won her some more fans, like Flash Thompson. Peter's still in a relationship with Liz, but he's proud of his superhero work. He's even managed to repurpose some of his silk tech into science fair winning inventions. By the time he reaches graduation, even his former bully Jason congratulates him for getting class valedictorian. Peter's humble about it, claiming Flash almost took his spot. Aunt May and Uncle Ben are both there to celebrate his achievements. If only your mother and father could have been here to see this. Wait, Parker, I thought these were your mom and dad. He's kidding, but yeah, you are. May and Ben are proud of both Peter and Flash. They both got good scholarships to Empire State University. Flash and Peter <laughs> banter about having to live together, but are interrupted. Norman Osborn is here to check up on the guy who won this year's Oscorp scholarship. Peter's happy to have such a generous backer and is determined to find some way to pay him back in time. Years down the line, Peter's become Oscorp's employee of the month and still on great terms with Norman. They just got all the stolen equipment back from the NYPD's impound lot. Peter smiles to himself. He's the one who called in Silk to stop the hijacking. Norman insists he wants this technology up and running by the end of today. Peter is happy to do his best. He's soon in the lab, powering up their big device. It's a teleportation system. Peter's got the receiver ready and instructs his partner to send something over when she's ready. Before she can, however, the pad lights up, shocking Dr. Parker. It's activated without him doing anything. The other tripod hasn't even been activated yet. Even weirder, within the mystery pod, Peter sees a band of spiders who have arranged themselves to spell out the word HELP. 
something very strange is going on here. And if you want more strange Spider-Man stories, check out our video on the time Spidey had to fight literal nightmares.